What I want to do now is introduce you to BioPearl um, as a tool for creating pipelines for data analysis. Um, one of the things that I need to emphasize is that if you're a Windows user, um, in order to use BioPearl, you first need to install Perl. Okay? Those of you that use the, the Unix-based systems, um, Perl is already installed. So if you have a Macintosh that's running the newer operating system, you already have Perl on your, on your computer. Um, and it comes installed with Linux. Um, Perl is a practical extraction and report language. It's basically a progr programming language for easily manipulating text files and processes. And what I want to emphasize is that when we think about sequences um, in FASTA format, they are basically just text files um, in, in the language of, of those that are more adept with computers than I am. It's a string file. It's a string of information, but it's just in text format. And so that's why Perl is an excellent programming language for manipulating those files. BioPerl is an open source project that develops modules for biological data in Perl. So a Perl module is a reusable package that's defined in a library file. And, and these modules are easy to use, and more importantly, they're interconnectable. So um, there are modules for sequence files, for alignment files, for database searching, and all of these objects can interact which allows you to create sort of a coordinated and also extensible framework for computational biology. Um, and I guess the, the way that I would describe it is that there's some really, really excellent Perl programmers that are creating these modules. And what we need to do as users is figure out which modules are appropriate for helping us. And I'm going to just introduce two of the modules to you today. Okay. So one of the things that BioPerl does is it it uses um, a, a naming convention to minimize namespace collisions. And so this naming con convention is to separate parts of a name by a double colon. And so just as an example, one of the modules that I'll introduce to you um, is based on um, the DB um, or database module. So in this name, it's basically invoking BioPerl. It's invoking the database module, and then it's invoking a module that's specifically set up for GenBank. Okay? So basically, we're, with this name, we're actually invoking separate modules and tying them together. And so what this module can do is it can instruct Perl to go to the database GenBank and then do something for you. Okay? In, in this case, it can automate the retrieval of a set of sequences. All right? Another module is the, the search I.O. module, which is used for parsing an input file and creating an output file. And so if our input file for search I.O. Is, is actually a BLAST output file, we can extract certain information out of that, create a new output file that's in tabular format that then allows us to look at the results of a complex BLAST search in, in a much more efficient way. And I'm going to give you an example of that. Okay. So you can find BioPerl by simply doing a Google search. It's going to be the first hit that comes up. Um, or you can look at www.bioperl.org. Okay. On the main page, what you can see is there's, there's a lot of documentation and information. And again, I'm going to emphasize the importance of taking a look at what's here and sifting through it on your own. So if you're really interested in learning about what BioPerl can do, um, I'm only going to you know, scratch the surface in the time that we have here today. Um, but if you go back to this as a resource, there's a lot of information there. Okay. So the resources here will instruct you how to, how to download the program and how to get it installed and running on your machine. Um, one of the things that I want to emphasize is that installation of BioPerl takes time. It's not as easy as BLAST. Um, you first need to issue a build command, and it builds the system on your computer. And um, this is done essentially through command line instructions. And as, this, as 
the system is being built, you're going to be queried at a number of steps. And the build may actually have to go and fetch some information or some packages that it needs and get those installed as well. And so you, really, you need internet access. You need your computer connected to the internet while you're doing this. Um, and again, for, for novices, essentially what I would recommend is that you follow the instructions and you go with the defaults on the queries.